We're going to end this chapter by considering um, in a bit more detail how are these gases actually transported. We've considered how they diffuse into the blood or out of the blood depending on um, the, the driving forces involved, but how are they actually transported when they are in the blood? Oxygen transport happens primarily through the action of binding to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a uh, molecule that is present in red blood cells. There's a lot of it present in red blood cells. Um, each hemoglobin molecule has four irons. You can just make them out here in this picture. And each hemoglobin molecule can carry four molecules of oxygen. Okay, so each of these can carry four oxygen molecules. And then there are 280 million, about um, 280 million of these per red blood cell. So in total, one red blood cell can carry more than a billion oxygen molecules. That's a lot of oxygen molecules. In sickle cell disease, what happens in sickle cell disease is there's a single amino acid substitution and it causes this, um, this molecule to tend to, to, it's almost like it polymerizes, it tends to pull, fold into a chain-like form and this alters the shape of the entire red blood cell when it happens to a high enough degree. So that can be very serious. That happens, that tends to happen, that misfolding tends to happen at low oxygen levels. That's when this altering of, of shape tends to happen. It's almost like a whole bunch of fibers end up forming in the red blood cell. So instead of the red blood cell being the round shape, instead it ends up having um, a sickle shape. It's almost kind of like a C shaped. And that can alter the ability of red blood cells to, to flow through blood vessels for one thing, um, alters the ability of oxygen to be delivered to the tissues. So um, ordinarily, if oxygen is being carried by a, a normal healthy blood cell, a red blood cell, ordinarily what would facilitate um, that red blood cell to, to release the oxygen is a couple of key things, two key things really, decreases in pH, and or increases in temperature. Either one will drive the red blood cell to give up its oxygen. So this is interesting because you can think about what happens when you're exercising. Your muscles generate heat and um, products of metabolism sometimes lower the pH as well. So this tends to drive red blood cells to give up their oxygen where they are most needed at me metabolically active sites in the body. Carbon dioxide, if we look at carbon dioxide, how is it transported in the blood? Carbon dioxide is carried in three different forms in the blood. About 10% is just dissolved in the plasma. Uh, it's a little bit more soluble than oxygen, so a little bit more can just dissolve into the plasma and be transported freely in that way. About 20% of it attaches to hemoglobin. Interesting, so oxygen is transported attached to hemoglobin. Turns out carbon dioxide can do that as well. Only about 20% of the carbon dioxide transports this way though. The majority is transported as bicarbonate ions. Um, so most of the transport happens in this form in the blood. And in order for this to be formed, uh, this requires an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase takes these two molecules, it takes carbon dioxide and water, if these are in the same vicinity with each other, carbonic anhydrase can cause these to react together to form carbonic acid. Um, okay, so this is taking place over in the picture, this is inside of a red blood cell. Carbonic acid is being formed. Once that is formed, it can dissociate. It's easy for it to dissociate. The same enzyme is involved in this process. Carbonic anhydrase can facilitate this reaction to happen. Um, so carbonic acid splits into a proton and the bicarbonate ion. The bicarbonate ion, this is something that can diffuse out into the plasma. So right over here, bicarbonate ion diffuses outwards. Uh, however, this proton that was formed, it's not able to diffuse outwards, not very easily. So that means that the pH inside of this cell is starting to, to lower, it's becoming more acidic. And what happens is a chloride ion tends to rush in to sort of counteract that. So we've got uh, bicarbonate diffusing outwards and chloride diffusing inwards. It's attracted to where this, this proton is at. This is called the chloride shift. The chloride shift happens um, and it's, it's the, just the reverse of it takes place when carbon dioxide is ready to be um, expelled from the body. So when we're ready to breathe carbon dioxide outwards, it's just the reverse reaction of the chloride shift.